Hello everyone, Mr. Zas here, not a video regarding boxing but a bit more on managing side. Some big news regarding boxing, I would say promotions and leagues as Saudi Arabia is looking to create their own boxing league, a new boxing governing body, something out of this world. But you know what out of this world is some websites are reporting that Saudis are willing to invest 5 billion. Money, 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 money. So 5B. 5 billion, big number, and who can compete with that? And is this actually a realistic number for boxing? Can we make return on that? And who gonna be the biggest loser if this boxing division comes to light? And I'm telling you, some people will gonna lose big time. This and more questions I gonna answer down the line in the video. But before that, I will gonna give you quick glimpse of my own university project I've been working on. So drum roll please Mr. Cat. Summer is here and so is the flip flop mafia flip flops. Easy to spot, hard to miss in bright orange color. If you're traveling around and you want to stand out, become the part of flip flop mafia today. Link is in the description. As you may know guys, um, I was in university for the last few years and this was part of the project, I needed to create something, some kind of product, so I thought I gonna solve one of my own issues, which was always misplacing one of the slippers, flip flops back home and looking for it, so I want to create something on the lines, functional fashion, looks good, easy to spot, so since I created these bright orange flip flops, I really have no issue finding them, as it's quite easy to find when they are missing as they always stand out regardless where they are being misplaced in my house under the bed or in the sink so yeah guys um feel free to purchase one of them or even two or five uh and share the links because yes guys after three years of hard university this is what i'm doing so guys without further ado let's jump back to the boxing and i'm gonna explain what's happening with this boxing league Okay, people, 5 billion, is it realistic? So this is a bit kind of trigger word, this is kind of PR stunt. Uh, Saudis are putting actually between 1.5 and 2 billion, that's what they are looking. Again, that's a crazy amount of money. The 5 billion is kind of more meant when the whole project comes together. There is TV channels coming in, there's web page coming in, you know, web streaming, merchandise, all that. That's what they are looking. Once they're going to put everything together, all the pieces, the whole net worth will gonna reach up to 5 billion so it's not just gonna be like saudis they're gonna be doing everything they're gonna be outsourcing certain things as they are building something up from absolute ground zero uh for the worldwide public so they're gonna be doing the same thing as before you cannot build everything up you need to attract people who already know what are they doing and now let's talk about the biggest winners and in this case the biggest losers so for the winners we have Queensbury, Matchroom and Top Rank. Uh, all of them are very top of the line boxing promotions. All of them are going up and down as they are competing against each other. We had Matchroom with AJ absolutely dominating for a few years. And then they kind of went under. They were not number one, at least not in UK. As Queensbury with Tyson Fury uh, at top of it kind of dominated. So... Boxing is kind of one year you can be really up, one year your promotion can be quite down. In this case, Saudis have nothing. So they need to acquire boxing promotions. Either you're chasing down a single boxer or you could just acquire the whole boxing promotion with the framework and everything being set up in there. So that's what they most likely look they're gonna do. Either they're gonna buy them out or they're gonna give them possibility to merge with this new boxing league. Most likely, once you're going to mention new boxing league, there are going to be new rules under it. Different weight categories, they may be adjusted. And uh, most likely, I think the boxers, I think personally, again, I'm looking at the UFC kind of rankings, that if you're going to sign up with the Saudi boxing league, you're not going to be able to compete on the boxing ranks of our alphabetic bodies. From my point of view, how I see it, Saudi is gonna try to copy UFC with certain improvements, making their own kind of fight tourney, which means they're gonna be able to cut, cut out 
boxing promoters as they gonna be quite irrelevant. You still kind of gonna need managers, but maybe with, even with the time, if you sign up with this boxing league, you're not gonna really need them because you're not gonna be like self-employed boxer. You actually kind of gonna be working for the league. I assume you're gonna have a contract and you're gonna get paid certain amount of money, maybe depending on your rankings. So this would greatly benefit people who come in with a small amount of fan base. There's many people who are very well skilled. They just don't have uh, the attraction. They don't have Olympic, let's say, Olympic glory, Olympic achievements that people don't know about them. On other sides, people like, let's say, like Canelo or AJ, they would need to have like a certain their own contracts because for them, this may not be as... Um, beneficial or as fair as they could generate as much or more money outside but overall joining this Saudi league would cut out so much a hassle from the boxer point of view and just streamline the whole process there would be downsides to it as most likely you would need to fight anyone which has been thrown at you as we have seen in the past Saudis are just taking Wilder they're taking against Zhang Maybe from outside, if you're looking Zhang versus Wilder in States, Wilder wouldn't agree this fight or something like that. In this case, I think there would be very harsh reparations regarding if you don't take the fight or you need to be have a really good excuse not to do it, something similar to the UFC. And again, these rankings, I think, would only be there. They would not go cross-platform to the alphabetic bodies kind of making if you are sticking with Saudi boxing league you are here it's boxing but I think there could be some nuances which disclude you from other boxing bodies and again this would be kind of interest of conflict where boxing bodies don't really want to they're competing so they're kind of discluding other uh, boxers so they're saying if you're there you are on these rankings you cannot come over if you come over you start from ground zero those are the rules but um Regardless of that, let's talk about the big losers, okay? Because uh, pretty much we're gonna end up with four of them here. So, people, the big four, alphabetic bodies, what can I say? WBA, 1001 belt, whatever. WBC, only in America. Yes, WBC, I think it's been run by King himself. Not directly, but, you know, WBC spend so much time with King, they're like, my God, this guy's a bloody genius, okay? So we're just gonna use his tactics and his sell pitch, uh, you know, to promote our belt. Used to be quite good, but now it seems like every single fight where there's more than 25 people in attendance is a special super duper belt, ocean blue, sky yellow, or, you know, whatever rose belt. So again, they're pumping these belts out. At least they only have one belt, but every single fight is special occasion. I don't know, as long as, you know, they get these TikTok views or whatnot, which is kind of opposite of WBO. Um, once you become champion of WBO, you don't really care. You can fight anyone. You just walk in the pub like Conor McGregor and you just start bashing people up. Throw the belt in there and be like, I defended my belt. Doesn't really matter. You can just defend against whoever. You don't need to take any mandatory challenges, which is opposite of IBF, which in my eyes, people, is the best sort of because they enforce the rules which stripped Tyson Fury from IBF belt which led that that Charles Martin became champion which was one of the weakest champions and in, in my eyes heavyweight champions in boxing which was uh, not the best move but he got annihilated in two rounds, let's be generous, let's say two rounds uh, by AJ, which was a good thing. So, I guess it was good, it was the right thing, and yeah, it worked out for the best in long term. <laughs> so, yeah, um, all these belts will gonna be irrelevant. That simple, they're gonna be irrelevant. And the main point is... They are just belts, they are just rankings, there's lots of corruptions, and why would Saudis deal with them? They are making their own belt. Why would they spend money on buying out a belt, or all four belts? It's just a waste of money, first of all. You're creating your own division. How are you going to go there? Will they going to sell out? It's lots of questions, lots of hassle. And if you're building something from ground zero, you don't need it. It's way more efficient, just do your own belt, do your own rankings, do your own rules. Just copy and paste most of them, small adjustments, all good. 
And if you look up on what Saudi's been doing in the past, they are being doing these boxing shows. But the whole idea, what I see from my point of view, is that they are kind of just testing the waters. If they put on these shows, they pay out the good money, they got the good fighters in there, can they pull it off? You know, they are putting the big fights on, can they pull it off? That simple. And the answer is yes. They are putting really competitive fights. We have Fury versus Usyk. How long? How long did it took for anyone else to put the fight on? There's one governing body. They put the fight on. They put the money in the place. No one is whinging about. Everything's been sorted out. Everything is done. AJ, Nugano, same thing. Nugano makes the most money he made in his whole career. Before that, he had a fight with Fury. Made the career highest payday. Now, AJ. Even more money. Okay? Easy. It just proves that if you put on good competitive fights, if you put them in there, you put the fighters there, they will gonna fight. If the money is right, they will gonna fight and they will gonna take the, uh, the possibility of taking that all. It's that simple. Um, <laughs> yeah, it all comes down to the pay-per-views in these days and Saudis can prove that quality of boxing, if it's there, People gonna pay the money and they're gonna watch. So they don't need to deal with these corrupt bodies. So how I see it, these four bodies, a alphabetic bodies, they're gonna be in states. They're gonna be in states and Saudi League will gonna be worldwide, just like UFC. And only the best of the best fighters gonna get invitation to go and join it. In conclusion, people, Saudis put these shows on to see is it actually feasible can we do it can we recuperate the investment they put them on it was great and what they are, they are creating is something similar to fly emirates yes the airline in similar fashion they're going to be using multi-level marketing to attract the people so you may think it's just like a boxing league which has been put on but they are promoting their culture their values and the experiences you may obtain if you come and visit there. As they are looking to become a cultural hub of the Middle East. So it's not just about good boxing. The whole concept is the good boxing and how we look after the boxers. You can have the same experiences. Uh, so simply saying what can other boxing bodies do as they are just belts. They are just the belt holders. They are not looking after the fighters. Saudis, from other end, just like an airline case, they are looking after. Their whole job is to look after them, to provide the first class service. Um, yeah, I really see them coming up onto the scene and this fight, Boxing League, will just going to start dominating. Because they are going to build it from ground up with a whole purpose to attract the people, to deliver good service and to make it commercial as possible. And that's how it is these days, because honestly, with the amount of they can provide the investment, they can do whatever they want. They can buy the best people and put on the best shows. And as it's been done in the past, in the last what, two years, they have done that. No one has complained. We had the best boxing. The boxing has been through the roof, on the rise. And what's happening? It's not in States. It's not in UK. It is middle of the desert. It is in Saudi Arabia. So yes guys, the calculation has been done. They have come back positive And this is happening. The only reason we hear about it is because people are now chatting around. Because the contracts are being sent out and they are trying to inquire boxing promoters, the best people in the world. And now people are talking about it. So yes, this is definitely happening. 2025 most likely going to be the start of the new boxing era. Most likely a gold era of boxing. The next gold era in boxing. Uh, where corruption will gonna be a thing of the past. As uh, simply saying you don't want to break rules in Middle East. It's not states guys. You know. They deal with corruption as with any other crime. So I think we're going to see the world's best boxing coming to the Middle East. And we're going to be streaming it. And what happens with other four alphabetic bodies? Well, that's kind of after them. I think they're going to take a massive dive 
going on there. But that's only my prediction. I mean, leave your thoughts below. What you think? Is it actually good for them to be around? Because opinions have changed so dramatically in the last few years. I think most people don't view WBA or WBC as anything but a money grab. So them going out of the business, I'm absolutely fine. And someone who knows how to do business and someone who wants actually for the best boxes to win, I'm all for it. I will definitely subscribe and I'm definitely going to pay for these pay-per-views. So yeah, guys, leave your thoughts below. Mrs. us out. Until next time.